Hello fellow humans, Chris here again. So today I wanted to talk about the vaccines again, uh, but, but more so than that about why I keep talking about it. Um, why I'm beating a dead horse, perhaps. Um, there's a few reasons. Uh, first off is my kids, probably first and foremost. Um, they're not vaccinated. They're going to a public school. They are um, surrounded by other kids who aren't vaccinated. And while they're wearing masks, um, it, it's just, it's hard for me to feel really confident that they're fully protected at school. Um, I, I see kids taking their masks off. I see parents without their masks on waiting for their kids to pick them up. And uh, that in itself is unfortunate because I, I, I've said it before, I don't know how we're going to be able to expect our kids to stick with the mask rules when the role model adults in their lives can't do it themselves. So that's, that's the big one. You know, and, and again, I've talked before about schools already having to scale back, uh, kids having to quarantine for two weeks for exposure it happened with my son um, you know so there's that aspect of it another part of it is uh, my sister-in-law who's a respiratory therapist and is on the verge of, of quitting really um, extremely overwhelmed um, entrepreneur uh, did a doing an endeavor sort of similar to me starting this podcast uh, way back when, before this pandemic hit, and um, she's completely stopped that, doesn't have the time or energy, and that's unfortunate in and of itself. Um, and I just see the toll it takes, the stress, uh, having to make these decisions every day about who you're going to treat, having to watch people die um, constantly, and it's just uh, it, it's just an unfortunate and preventable um, situation that she and many many other healthcare workers are having to go through across the country. You know, we hear these stories about triage and and um, do you help the vaccinated or do you help the unvaccinated? How do you make those decisions? Um, I, I just wish that people like her wouldn't have to go through that. So for me to uh, just lend my voice in any way I can. It's not hard for me. Um, it's it's the least I can do. And just hoping that, uh, you know, throwing out a, a, a bunch of lines will catch one person and maybe make somebody's life a little bit easier, not just for that person who might get their shot, but for the person with a heart attack who will be able to get a bed because somebody who chose to go unvaccinated won't be taking up that bed. And that one nurse or respiratory therapist that doesn't have to make that decision about who they're gonna put on the ventilator to save that person's life. And then having to live with that decision when they go home and they can't sleep because they wonder about, should I have helped the other person because the person that I chose to help died anyway. Um, those decisions take a toll on you after a while, uh, a very strong emotional toll. And um, I'm worried about losing competent, capable, knowledgeable medical experts in the field because they're burning out. So there's also that. And then the other one, the other thing is on a personal level, um, I know people that um, I, I think can still be reached uh, if you find the right words. Um, the message that I sent about DHS and the military, um, I had specific people in mind with that. Um, and they might not even watch my channel, um, but I think that they're there's hope that maybe somebody else 
in a similar situation, a similar mindset as this person that I'm thinking about might stumble on the message or maybe somebody watching my channel um, know somebody in a similar situation and they might share the message that, that I shared. Um, a master chief, uh, it, which is a, a rank in the Coast Guard and the Navy, the Coast Guard and Navy have the same rank structures, um, is an E9. Okay, it's a very high rank. Uh, it's the senior enlisted rank. Master Chief Petty Officer of the Coast Guard is an E10. Uh, that is the single highest rank of the enlisted force. Highly, highly respected position. Um, in his message that I referred to, he specifically called out chiefs. Chiefs are the E7s and above. Uh, those are your gunnery sergeants, first sergeants, tech sergeants, sergeant first classes in the... DOD world. Uh, in the DHS world, Chief, Senior Chief, Master Chief, Master Chief, Petty Officer of the Coast Guard. Highly, highly respected people. Um, he specifically called out his chiefs and he talked about the shots being akin to PPE, Personal Protective Equipment. That is a language that if you are a competent chief you speak that language and you understand that language I personally know and work with chiefs that are anti-vax anti-covid even being a real thing and these are smart competent people that are knowledgeable in what we do in an academic sense uh, they know the technical information that they need to know to do their job. They're smart people. They're people that I trust, um, that, I, that I would feel safe working with in any other context outside of this one specific topic. Um, because of that, I think that there's hope for at least some of these people when they hear Master Chief give a message like that and they're calling out the chiefs. Um, I, I, I have to believe there's at least some hope of reaching them. Now, there's a mandate, so they're going to be mandated to get the vaccine. But some of those people might choose to get out, um, and some of those people might not actually believe it in their hearts, and they might begrudgingly go and get the vaccine, but they don't believe in it. If we can get people to actually believe in it, then I, I at least would hope that that could lead to um, a domino effect, as it were, of, um, of knowledge, of sharing this information. Um, I think that there's, in a very general sense, two types of anti-vaxxers. There are the, the untouchables, the QAnon, conspiracy theorist types, the Tucker Carlson's, or the people that listen to those types of people anyway. Um, they may be unreachable. Um, that, you know, the ones that booed Trump himself when even Trump was telling his base to go get the vaccine. Those people, they might be a lost cause. Those are oftentimes the ones that are on their deathbed finally saying, I wish I had gotten the vax. Um, but there are other people who just have maybe implicit biases or some kind of barrier within themselves. Um, you know, maybe they've been lied to. Uh, maybe they've been misinformed by those, those Tucker Carlson types. Um, but they don't have quite the hard-headedness, the stubbornness um, to where they're completely unreachable. There might be something there that you can still connect with. And um, the military uh, is very unique in 
the um, the respect that comes with certain positions that you can see on their collar, and you know there there's a um, we do train people to think for themselves. We want people to be able to make discretionary judgment calls in the field, but we have standards and protocols that you will comply. Um, you, you will get compliance. Um, and so, for one, I'm hoping to reach those, though, and I say I, um, but it's it's not about me. I'm not. It's it's the message. It's just that's going around from senior leadership. The, the intent is to get compliance, obviously, which you will get, uh, but it's also to change hearts and minds to, you know, when you hear somebody that you really respect um, and you've been trained up in this environment where, okay, you're, you're the chief and you have certain responsibilities, you're going to hear Master Chief giving those instructions and you're going to respect it and you're maybe going to change the way you think about it because of the source of the messaging. This is not a political pundit. This is not the president. This is not a social media influencer. This is a highly, highly respected position telling you this. And... Uh, Again, if it just makes one person take it more seriously, then it's worth it for me to say something. Uh, it's not. It doesn't take anything more out of me. I don't have to go read another book or read an article or watch a news story or read a study. I don't need to do any homework. And uh, with my kids in school now, with these, with new things happening in my life, with people I know going through sickness sometimes or personal stresses, I don't necessarily always have the time to be research Chris and go find some new topic to tackle. Um, this is an imminent crisis, and um, I just think that I would be remiss if I didn't at least say something every time that I see some kind of angle, some something that might make one person say, you know what, that makes sense. Um, you know, I was beating a dead horse last year when I was uh, when I was going on and on about voting for Joe Biden. Um, I had this uh, video about capping the well, which maybe I'll. Maybe I'll pull out of the archives and put a uh, put a little link to. But I had somebody who was a Bernie supporter and who wasn't big on the uh, vote for anybody Democrat, but uh, but they did seem to like my message about capping the well and rethought voting for Biden because of that. Um, and that made me feel good about it. Uh, if if I can make one person see something a little bit of a different way, it's worth it to me because that person might then go say something to somebody else. And I think that's how that's how messaging gets across, especially in today's world where you can just pull out your phone, post a tweet, you know, do an Instagram. Send a tech, send a TikTok uh, video, whatever you know. Information just goes around so fast. Uh, I it's kind of like taking steroids in the Olympics. You know, if I don't if I don't do something, I'm not gonna be able to keep up with it all, and, and then maybe maybe the message falls behind. So anyway, that's just kind of something I was thinking about. Um, that's why I keep going on with it, and uh, you know, hopefully. Hopefully things will get better. I don't. I don't know how soon that'll happen. I know we just hit. We're hitting numbers right now of cases and deaths uh, as high as they were back in March, when the vaccines first started. So that's obviously depressing, but um, that's why I keep. That's why I keep going at it. 
Uh, anyway, um, thanks for checking in on me. I will catch up with you all again very soon. Have a great rest of your day. Remember, don't be afraid to question the consensus.